One May Be Dreaming by Thomas Ligotti Read by Jeff Clark Beyond the windows a dense fog spreads across the graveyard, and a few lights beam within hazy depths, glowing like old lamps along an empty street. Night is softly beginning. Within the window are narrow bars, both vertical and horizontal, which divide it into several smaller windows. The intersections of these bars form crosses. Not far beyond the window panes, there are other crosses jutting out of the earth-hugging fog in the graveyard. To all appearances, it is a burial ground in the clouds that I contemplate through the window. Upon the window ledge is an old pipe that seems to have been mine in another life. The pipe's dark bowl must have brightened to a reddish gold as I smoked and gazed beyond the window at the graveyard. When the tobacco had burned to the bottom, perhaps I gently knocked the pipe against the inside wall of the fireplace, showering the logs and stones with warm ashes. The fireplace is framed within the wall perpendicular to the window. Across the room are a large desk and a high-backed chair. The lamp positioned in the far right corner of the desk serves as illumination for the entire room, a modest supplement to those pale beacons beyond the window. Some old books, pens, and writing paper are spread across the top of the desk. In the dim depths of the room, against the fourth wall, is a towering clock that ticks quietly. These, then, are the main features of the room in which I find myself. Window, fireplace, desk, and clock. There is no door. I never dreamed that dying in one's sleep would encompass dreaming itself. I often dreamed of this room, and now, near the point of death, have become its prisoner. And here my bloodless form is held while my other body somewhere lies still and without hope. There can be no doubt that my present state is without reality. If nothing else, I know what it is like to dream. And although a universe of strange sensation is inspired by those lights beyond the window, by the fog and the graveyard, they are no more real than I am. I know there is nothing beyond those lights, and that the obscured ground outside could never sustain my steps. Should I venture there, I would fall straight into an absolute darkness, rather than approaching it by the degrees of my dying dreams. For other dreams came before this one, dreams in which I saw lights more brilliant, a fog even more dense and gravestones with names I could almost read from the distance of this room. But everything is dimming, dissolving, and growing dark. The next dream will be darker still, everything a little more confused, my thoughts wandering, and objects that are now part of the scene may soon be missing, perhaps even my pipe, if it was ever mine, will be gone forever. Those lights flickering in the fog seem the very face of infinity, the spare features of an empty mask. The clock begins to sound within the room, and for a moment the silent void has found an echoing voice. Everything is dimming, dissolving. The next dream will be darker still. And when I awake, the room will be darker, dissipating like a fog around me a black fog in which everything will drown and all my thoughts will be gone forever. But for the moment I am safe in my dream, this dream. Beyond the window a dense fog spreads across the graveyard and a few lights beam within hazy depths, glowing like old lamps along an empty street. Night is softly beginning.